Greetings and salutations from beautiful Greenville, North Carolina. Bah, 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 bah. Welcome back to my channel. So I thought I'd switch it up for y'all a little bit today. Step outside, come on to the side yard, shoot a little video in the blistering hot sun to talk about boots. Yes, we are talking about boots in the spring, summer. You want to know why? Because me personally, I wear boots year round. So what we're going to be focusing on today is what I would call the five essential boot types. So without any further delay, Delay, let's get right into it. Okay, so for our first style of boot we're going to cover is the quintessential combat boot or rugged boot. But for the sake of this particular conversation, we're just going to mesh them all into one. Now, these typically, but not always, have a lace front shaft, usually a little bit taller in that six inch or higher realm. And more often than not, they do have a round toe box, though that is not ubiquitous with the style. There are a few square toe options out there for you. They also tend to have like a rugged, more lug sole look, though. So you can get a combat boot with a more dress sole look. Now, for the sake of a visual aid for this video, we will be taking a look at some of the features of this Dr. Martin and Rick Owens combat style boot. Now, like I always say, I can't remember the exact name or number, but I'll put it up here on the screen somewhere. Anyway, this one has a lot of the hallmarks of your classic combat boot, having an extra tall shaft, pause, a round toe, a rugged sole that's actually a stack sole, so it's a little bit more like a platform sole. As you can see, some of the identifiers that we talked about from earlier. Now, when I think about styling combat boots, nine times out of 10, I'm thinking about styling them in a more casual way. And that's mostly because, like I said, combat boots in my mind usually are a more rugged style, though you can get a dressier style. I do think the taller shaft on the combat boot does lend it to more of those skinnier punk styles, but you can also lean into like the baggy or flare trend and kind of cover the top of the boot and let that toe box, maybe the laces peek out a little bit. Of the five Five styles that we're gonna cover I would honestly say the combat boot is the most casual out of all of them you can get a dressier combat boot I've definitely seen it pulled off but on the whole when I think about a combat boot I just think about a more casual looking shoe but hey if you disagree let me know down there in the comments man I'm all about the discussion as you can see So your next essential boot type is going to be the square toe boot. And the square toe has had quite the resurgence over the last few years after being exiled from fashion for about the last two decades. Now, in this particular case, I'm not talking about women's wear. I'm talking about men's wear because I know in women's wear, the rules are a lot different, especially when to footwear with western and i mean like cowboy western styles really permeating in the zeitgeist especially going as far back to like the 2010s when eddie slemon was running saint laurent Perry, and we saw him injecting a little bit of that western style into their collections though i would say it was a little bit more inspired by punk styles than actual western styles more like punk co-opted from western if that makes any sense then a few years later we saw raf simmons take over calvin klein and do the CK205 West 39th NYC, you know, something that I really love and really, really approach that Western style from the lens of an outsider and then reinterpreting it through Calvin Klein, a storied American brand that had its own roots in kind of co-opting Western styles with the fact that they were really known for making denim. And we all know that denim came from the old West. I can't tell you how many times I had to say that sentence. <laughs> Kind of drove me crazy. Nowadays, we're really starting to see that Western boot style represented in a lot of ways, including the square toe. Now, for this particular video, I am going to be highlighting a pair of Calvin Klein 205 boots. This time, my harness Chelsea boots with the metal caps on the toe. Now, as you can see from this particular style, it has that classic Chelsea boot shaft. Then it goes into a nice angular cut on the side, and then it brings it to a nice squared off toe. It's not the most extreme square toe. It's almost like a hybrid, if any. Anything. And then, of course, the shoe is finished off with the harness on the side that really gives it kind of that mock Western boot look. Now, I absolutely love these boots. I've held on to them now for, I want to say, about five years. And that's because they are really one of my essential boots. Now, when it comes down to styling the square toe boot, I really look at them as being like really casual, much like the combat boot, though they are in a lot of ways more elevated because they don't have any laces on them. Number one, they're like a pull on boot. And depending on like how they're designed, what the sole looks like, you could definitely fit them in with a suit or with a pair of like dress trousers, which I often do with these particular boots. I do, however, feel like it brings the look down to a more casual look, like I'm wearing my casual suit 
as opposed to wearing like my fancy go to meeting suit. Now, if you're from the South, you know what the fuck that means. Either way, the square toe can be very versatile because like I said, you can dress it up a little bit. You still have a little window in there where they can still pass as a dressier boot. Even though when you step up at the wedding with the square toes on, everybody gonna be looking at you like, these are the dressiest shoes you got at home, ain't it? And you know what? It's perfectly fine if they are your dressiest shoes because a square toe boot is super versatile, like I said. While I got you here, you fucking with this video? Go ahead and click that like button for you, boy. Let, let me know, man. Let me know you, you enjoy this little bit of content I'm dropping for you. And also, if you're really vibing with this or any of my other videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button, man. We're trying to get to 1K, man. Let them know you fucks with your boy the long way. And I'm going to keep bringing you this five fashion content just how you like it. Anyway, back to the video. Now, next up, we have our classic round toe boot, which is going to be your most standard boot. Now, obviously, we've seen the round toes in our combat boot already. However, in this particular case, I'm talking about more of a pull on boot and less of a lace up. Now, your options in a round toe boot are going to be pretty vast and limitless. It could go from something that is tuxedo ready like this, or it could be something like the ones that we're featuring in this video, my Rick Owens. I think they are fall, winter 2018, or even spring, summer 2018, mainline creeper boots. Now, one thing I will concede about these is that these are extremely casual. They're best paired with like your more casual Rick pants, like the pushers that I'm wearing. Sometimes I like to pair them with my Mastodon pants. They look really good with more cropped styles with jeans that kind of vibe they're really giving like a weird mashup of 1960s british mod and 1990s goth a few key details of these and a lot of these particular things are the things that make them not just a round toe boot but also a rick owens boot and that's really starting up from the shaft very simple very slim really get some nice ruching at the top which is the thing that i probably love about these the most and then it has a very simple chelsea boot side just a nice simple elastic on the sides then it moves down to the extended buttocks in the back it looks kind of like a booty it is a little bit more exaggerated than most are and then moving into the front a nice round toe a little bit exaggerated kind of pokes up a little bit and you can kind of see the dna from this boot moving into more of like your bozo beetle tractor boot and then on the bottom the classic creeper sole now like i said with the styling it really is going to depend on what variation of the round toe boot that you have if you have something that's a little bit more polished maybe more of a dress heel that's going to lend itself to dressier looks though you can take it down to something a bit more casual and use it as a way to elevate a more casual look but then you also have kind of how i would wear these creepers in more casual ways with crop pants even if they are like wool crop pants i would still wear them with like a pair of crop pants and like a t-shirt or maybe like a short sleeve button now to something chill and flowy anyway it is one of those quintessential styles that you have probably owned owned at some point in time in your life, or maybe you have owned its little brother, the lace-up Oxford. Now, our next style, the semi-pointed boot, I think is probably the most versatile version of the boots on this particular list. Now, the reason why I say this is the semi-pointed thrives in both formal looks and very casual looks. Depending on the variation you have and what type of sole it has, I've definitely seen them look incredible at weddings with paired with tuxedos. I've also seen them look incredible with pretty much any jean shape, whether it be skinny, slim, wide leg, boot cut, like whatever it is, and still thrive over there. Now, in my opinion, I think you see the most cowboy influence on the semi-pointed boot. And I believe that's why they are so versatile because cowboy boots are super versatile, especially if they're well taken care of. Now, I don't currently own any cowboy boots. All of my boots are like cowboy boot adjacent, much like these Givenchy rider boots. Now, taking a look at these, like I said, you can immediately see the cowboy boot influence from the shaft that takes a little bit of a hybrid of the Chelsea boot elastic at the top and adds what looks like maybe some blinds. You can really see kind of like that cowboy boot influence like right there. And then as you move down the shaft to the forefoot, you could kind of see that angular cut moving into that semi pointed toe. And then, of course, on the bottom, it has that slanted Cuban heel, which is a hallmark of your classic 
cowboy boots. Now for styling, as I've already stated, it's gonna work for your formal looks and it's also gonna work with your casual looks. Now for me, these are my primary work shoes because I just like to look super fly or super sexy every time I walk into the building. For styling, I think these have a ton of flexibility, which we already covered at the beginning. For more casual looks, a pair of slim jeans or a pair of chino pants or a pair of boot cut jeans or wide leg jeans will work really, really, really well. I think you can also throw them on with a pair of slacks and a blazer and really be out here out this world. You could pair them with like a sweater and a button up shirt and a pair of slacks. So there's a lot of different ways you can wear them. The only thing that I wouldn't really recommend wearing them with is a pair of shorts. Now, lastly, it's time to talk about what I think is probably the most formal version of these boots out here and something I rarely see come in like lug sole variations. And that is the pointed toe boot. I mean, come on, you had to know it was coming. We just talked about semi pointed toe boots. Now, though you can make them work with jean related outfits, and I think some of that comes from, once again, that cowboy boot influence, I think that they really thrive in more dressy and formal situations. Now, for the visual aid portion on this one, it's going to be another pair of Calvin Klein 205 West 39th NYC. This time the TXT harness boots though, mines are missing the harness. I know, I know. I'm a terrible boot owner. Now, even with the missing harness, they still serve as a great example for our pointed toe boot today. Now you'll notice a few key features carrying over from some of the other boots that we talked about, like the taller shaft, though this particular one doesn't have any Chelsea boot elastine on it, instead going for more of a side zipper, which we haven't really seen since that first combat boot. Now one thing about this shaft, it is very, very slim and it does move down into a slim silhouette in the forefoot, which is slightly elongated to give you that point at the toe. And then it's capped off once again with a Cuban heel, though this one is slightly higher than that Givenchy boot was. Now, as you can see, it's just very sleek. And even though mines are a little dull right now because they haven't been polished in a little while, it still looks like a dressier shoe when you just look at it straight on. So that brings us over into styling. How would you style these? Well, like I said, they do work just fine with jeans. Not always my favorite look, though I will say they look really nice when paired with some slim black bootcut jeans and a nice flowy button up shirt. Think more like SLP in like 2014. But like I said, where I think they really shine and do their thing is with more formal looks. And it doesn't always have to be suiting. If you look back at the old 205 runways, you would often see them paired with wool marching band pants or the full suit version of it. But it would be like wool marching band pants and like the wool Western shirts. I just thought that look was incredible. It looks very button up and very clean. Just the perfect dressy look without being dressed up. I've, I've often also seen them paired with like wedding suits with tuxedos. I really love it when they're paired with tuxedos. I like boots with tuxedos in general, like any time of the year. I don't care, summer, spring, winter, fall. You put some boots on with your tuxedo and you are killing it in my mind, especially if the suit fits well. Definitely a versatile boot, but not quite as versatile as the rest of the ones on this list. But something I feel like everybody should own, no less. Well, there you have it my friends just a few boot types that i feel like are really essential for anybody's wardrobe doesn't matter what gender you are i think you can appropriate any of this information over to pretty much any type of closet anyway if you enjoyed this video you'll probably like one of the two on the screen and until next time peace